In this video, we will be discussing the American Revolution. This is a major topic that is always tested on the AP exam. In 1775, the Continental Congress adopts the Olive Branch Petition, written by John Dickinson, which appeals directly to King George III and expresses hope for reconciliation between the colonies and Great Britain. Dickinson, who had hoped desperately to avoid a final break with Britain, phrased colonial opposition to British policy as follows, quote, Your Majesty's ministers, persevering in their measures and proceeding to open hostilities for enforcing them, have compelled us to arm in our own defense, and engaged us in a controversy so peculiarly abhorrent to the affections of your still faithful colonists, that when we consider whom we must oppose in this contest, and if it continues, what may be the consequences, our own particular misfortunes are accounted by us only as parts of our distress. On January 9, 1776, writer Thomas Paine publishes his pamphlet Common Sense, setting forth his arguments in favor of American independence. In the 18th century, pamphlets were an important medium for the spread of ideas in the 16th through 19th centuries. Originally published anonymously, Common Sense advocated for independence for the American colonies from Britain as considered one of the most influential pamphlets in American history. Credited with uniting average citizens and political leaders behind the idea of independence, common sense played a remarkable role in transforming a colonial squabble into the American Revolution. At the time Paine wrote common sense, most colonists considered themselves to be angry British citizens. Paine fundamentally changed the mood of the colonists' argument with the Crown when he wrote the following, quote, Europe and not England, is the parent country of America. This new world hath been the asylum for the persecuted lovers of civil and religious liberty from every part of Europe. Hither they have fled, not from the tender embraces of the mother, but from the cruelty of the monster. And it is so far true of England that the same tyranny which drove the first emigrants from home pursues their descendants still. still. The Declaration of Independence was the first formal statement by a nation's people asserting their right to choose their own government. An armed conflict between bands of American colonists and British soldiers began in April of 1775. The Americans were fighting only for their rights as a subject of the British Crown. By the following summer, with the Revolutionary War in full swing, the movement for independence from Britain had grown, and the delegates of the Continental Congress were faced with a vote on the issue. In mid-June 1776, a five-man committee, including Thomas Jefferson, John Adams, and Benjamin Franklin, were tasked with drafting a formal statement of the colony's intentions. The Congress formally adopted the Declaration of Independence, written largely by Jefferson, in Philadelphia on July 4th, a date now celebrated as the birth of American independence. The Declaration of Independence also provided justification to the world why the United States was breaking away. It did begin to persuade colonists to join the cause, and it also convinced foreign governments to help. American colonists became divided over the issue of independence as the war began. Two groups emerged during the conflict. Colonists who supported independence were known as patriots. They came mostly from New England and Virginia, from all social classes and regions. regions but they tended to be more radical and from a lower socioeconomic class. Slaves that joined the cause were pro promised freedom in the North. Colonists who supported the British were known as Loyalists, or Tories. They represented about 20 to 30 percent of the population in the colonies of New York, New Jersey, and Georgia. Many of them, fearing for their lives, fled to Britain or north to Canada. They too came from all walks of life, but tended to be wealthier and more conservative. Loyalists were also members of the Anglican Church. Native Americans tended to favor the side of the Loyalists and the British because of the Proclamation of 1763. Let's look at the military strategies of both sides. The American military strategy was, a, was that of attrition, the idea that you're trying to wear down the enemy and to get them to give up. Remember that the Americans could not stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the British, so their only choice was to try to get them to give up the fight. Their second military strategy was known as guerrilla warfare. Washington would use guerrilla tactics like hitting and run, and the idea that they don't have to win the battle, they just have to not lose. That gave them a severe advantage in this war. And the third major strategy 
that the colonists would employ is making an alliance with one of Britain's enemies. Because Britain was the most powerful country in the world, they had a lot of enemies. And so the United States, or the American colonists, were trying to make an alliance with one of those countries. The British strategy was breaking the colonists in half by dividing the north and the south. So if they could divide and conquer, that was their strategy. Uh, because the British had the most powerful navy in the world, they wanted to blockade the ports and prevent the flow of goods and supplies from any of, of their allies. And then finally, they wanted to use loyalist support to try to undermine the independence movement. The first phase of the war happens in New England. The major battle of this phase will be Bunker Hill. It is a British victory, but it boosts colonial morale because the Americans were able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the British. On June 17, 1775, early in the war, the British defeated the Americans at the Battle of Bunker Hill in Massachusetts. Despite their loss, the inexperienced colonial forces inflicted significant casualties against the enemy and the battle provided them with an important confidence boost during the Siege of Boston. Although commonly referred to as the Battle of Bunker Hill, most of the fighting actually occurred on nearby Breed's Hill. General George Washington's army crossed the icy Delaware on Christmas Day, 1776, and over the course of the next 10 days won two crucial battles of the American Revolution. In the Battle of Trenton on December 26th, Washington defeated a formidable garrison of Hessian mercenaries before withdrawing. A week later, he returned to Trenton to lure British forces south and executed a daring night march to capture Princeton on June, January 3rd. The victories reasserted American control in much of New Jersey and greatly improved the morale and unity of the colonial army and militias. Fought 18 days apart in the fall of 1777, the two battles of Saratoga were a turning point in the American Revolution. On September 19th, British General John Burgoyne achieved a small but costly victory over American forces led by Horatio Gates and Benedict Arnold. Though his troop strength had been weakened, Burgoyne again attacked the Americans at Bemis Heights on October 7th, but this time was defeated and forced to retreat. He surrendered 10 days later, and the American victory convinced the French government to formally recognize the colonists' cause and enter the war as their ally. It brought more than just limited aid and supplies. The French would send their army and navy to help the American colonists. Spain, Holland, and Russia would also give support, and it widened the war, causing Britain to have to fight in Europe as well. October 19, 1781, when the British General Charles Cornwallis surrendered his troops in Yorktown, Virginia. General Cornwallis brought 8,000 British troops to Yorktown. They expected help from British ships sent from New York. The British ships never arrived. Analyze the painting. In the center of the scene, American General Benjamin Lincoln appears mounted on a white horse. He extends his right hand toward the sword carried by surrendering British officers who heads the long line of troops that extend into the background. To the left, French officers appear standing and mounted beneath the white banner of the Royal Bourbon family. On the right are American officers beneath the Stars and Stripes. Among them are Marquis de Lafayette and Colonel Jonathan Trumbull, the brother of the painter. General George Washington, riding a brown horse, stayed in the background because Lord Cornwallis himself was not present for the surrender. This is the final battle of the American Revolution, where the British will surrender to the American colonists. The Treaty of Paris is the treaty that officially ends the American Revolution. Here are the terms. England would officially recognize the American independence. The Mississippi River will become the western boundary of the United States. Americans would promise to pay back their debts and return lands to any loyalists whose lands were seized. England would keep their rights to Canada who would share fishing rights off of Newfoundland in the Atlantic. And finally, Spain would receive Florida back from Britain. Why did the colonists win the war? One major reason why the American colonists were able to win is because of home field advantage. Remember that the British had about a hundred years of salutary neglect, meaning they never came to the colonies. British soldiers had no idea of the terrain, in the colonies and were at a severe disadvantage. 
Remember, secondly, that the American colonists received a lot of aid from France, Spain, and Holland. A lot of training and weapons and supplies from the French especially. Number three, Washington's strategy of attrition was very, very effective. The idea that we didn't have to win the war, we had to just get the British to give up. Timely victories in certain spots were very important for the American colonists. And, and finally, a major reason why the colonists won is because the Continental Congress did such a great job of managing the war throughout the war effort. And finally, why did the British lose the war? How did the most pop powerful country in the world lose to a bunch of colonists? Well, number one, the war was very unpopular at home, especially with merchants, because it was bad for business. Some people in Parliament were against the war because they didn't want to spend the money. Uh, some of the generals knew that it was a very difficult war to win because of the pure geography. This war was very costly and it risked losing more things than just the land that they lost. Uh, number three, the British used the wrong military tactics. They used the old-fashioned straight lines of fighting that they had used in Europe for, for decades. And the Americans used better military tactics to beat them. They also lacked the, the amount of manpower to suppress the revolt, so they actually had to pay mercenaries to join their military. And remember that if you're fighting for your country, you have more motivation. If you're fighting for independence, you have greater motivation than someone that's getting paid to do that. So those paid mercenaries are not really trying to fight as hard as they want to. And then finally, America was just too big. It was difficult for the British to manage all of this territory and try to occupy it all at one time. It was just too difficult for them to do. And so that, those are the major reasons why they lost the war.